Now, what are your people? Had they anticipated this uh, box death in this testimony? Did the Bittmans, uh, th did they, did they, uh, did they, uh, they still hold to their conviction? Do they really believe that this boy stole this money from Kirk? Well, I went over that with Fred. I haven't uh, discussed that directly with Bittman. I, I don't really like to get uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. too close to him, you know. I agree with you. <clears throat> uh, Fred was shook. So I guess you would be, uh, Mr. Godfrey. Have you ever told him what I thought about it, where he died this, Fred? I, I really haven't told him that you well, thought that. I told him I thought Sometime I wish you'd tell him, and I think he's just a damn fool to sit there and let that happen. That's what I think. You know, I thought when we put him in there that he wouldn't let this, these city boys take him, but they just made a monkey out of him. But, I mean, I can't pick him. But, uh, Anyway, go ahead. What the? Well, he knows. He knows I feel that way, but he uh, just really levels me. I think he feels that way. Argue back up. He uh, he uh, said, "Well, it wasn't the same envelope. How do you know that?" He said, "Well, they testified the mail envelope was the white envelope. Well, that's ridiculous. It's just hindsight tells you there's no way in the world anybody can put that precise amount of money in that envelope or any envelope." Anticipate something like this. It's too great a coincidence. <coughs> he said, Well, it, it, it's quite a coincidence. Uh, but uh, is it any more so than Baker's uh, entering his safe and deposit box before and after? I said, Well, yeah. This guy can have a lot of reasons for entering his safe and deposit box. It was the first time he'd done it. So he said, Oh, it's the first time. I said, to Say what he entered it for, what he put in there, what he did. You know, he's got the circumstances. Miller signed one in Austin, and we just, we just uh, 
went and got this money and told them to go on and use it, whatever, whatever it was, and we'd take care of it later. Now, my judgment is that this fellow was trying to keep unanimous control of that committee. He was running it over Harry Bird, and he took everybody on it that had an election. And whether they had an opponent or not, whatever their expenses were, going back or anything, and my guess is he told every damn one of me to help him. And this boy was a conduit like he was for uh, every Democrat for 20 years. He was just a damn page boy for all of them. If they wanted cigars, he'd go get them. If they wanted to drink, he'd go get it. If they wanted to deliver money, he'd go deliver it. And Bob Kerr wasn't any more stealing any money than a monkey. He just uh, he just got had a heart attack, and he just never did deliver his damn money. But he was there to deliver. And he did deliver the money to this boy and he, he delivered the credit to him, and he saved the damned operation. But there's nothing they can go to penitentiary for, and there was. Now, that's my judgment, and I'm not so damn sure he didn't give it, some of it, to him. But I know he told me one time that one of your, my good friends from Alabama, he said that he's having an awful hard time going with us on this measure but said he's going to go because I told him that he's authorized to go on and spend up to 15. I'll pick it up. I know he told Mr. Ebert that a good many times. And I know that they did. And it might be a little jerk congressman in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> but they did, and he was ready to take over that Senate and was running it when he, when he had this heart attack operated in a big way, but uh, if there's anything wrong, he did it, or I did it, somebody else, this, this kid, uh, just, he just got to, when he had nothing to do, and got in all this business, and started having all this trouble, and the damn tornadoes hit him, and earthquakes, and everything else, and there wasn't one man in the Senate could help him, and he's the one that kept him in the job, he wanted to leave, he just was urging to leave, and I wanted him to leave. And I had him out of there. He was going to go practice law. Hell, I offered him fifty-five dollars a year to come work with us in the valley. And he's getting sixteen or eighteen or something. But Kurt told him no, and Kurt told me, he said, "Yeah, damn you! Don't you tell that boy that." He said, "We can't run this thing without him. He's the most valuable man we got." Well, it's just exactly like you losing Hoover or somebody that's the most valuable man. And Mansfield said, "I won't. I'll resign if you leave." So that was the situation up there. I have never talked to him since this thing begun. I've never had a message, except he called up and wanted me to testify, but I've never had a discussion with him. But uh, I know that he is, has been victimized, persecuted, unjustly treated, lied upon by all the papers. And you know, I was reading this afternoon about all this three-year period here while he's doing all this. He was then responsible to the majority leader, Johnson. Well, hell, I wasn't vice president. I was vice president from 61 on. I had no more control over him than I have over the Justice Department. <laughs> but that's, that's the way these things happen. Well, it's, a, <coughs> it's a miserable situation. Yeah. Yeah. How long is it going to take him? A couple of weeks? No, they, <coughs> I, <coughs> I didn't hear the rest of it uh, this evening. Uh, last night they said uh, they thought it'd go to the jury next week. What are you going to do with these fellows now? Just keep them sitting there to to uh, handle a columnist the rest of their life, these Bittmans and the rest of them when this is over? I think Bittman will be even. I'm talking to Courtney Evans, who's been about the well, <coughs> vital spot for us. He'll be leaving about the first of March. It's going to look amicable. I think it's much better than it looks like. Get uh, Harold Reese we need him pretty soon. I think. These are the <coughs> teams I think Bill for the uh, Committee Red Team. Where was his? Uh, where was he obtained? Where? Where is he from? Oh, Bill was um, from Wisconsin, I guess. He went to Marquette and uh, finished his law out there. I think. <coughs> came down here, uh, this was in the organized crime section, and then transferred out to Chicago. And uh, when they 
started the trust fund case while they were funding Charles C. Smith, which just kind of cracked up the weekend before the case was to go to trial. <coughs> and uh, they ran Bittman in to try it. He hadn't uh, been in except for reference in the investigation. Well, the case, he tried that case, <coughs> which was a long, that's hard a, trial. That's a Hoffa case. That's a Hoffa case from Chicago. <coughs> Uh, secured a conviction and then was brought down here uh, after that and then put on this case. Uh, Who put him on this, you know? <clears throat> well, uh, Nick did. Back in, uh, oh, I can't remember when it was, but uh, it's a long time. I tried to get him off for a long time. And time or two I thought we were going to, but they were always <clears throat> was a real touchy thing. <laughs> no way it gets them off any time recently that I can see that would cause much greater injury than one already inflicted. But he was put on well before Jack Miller left. And he, of course, handled the, he was on it a long time. Well, I can tell you, he was on it uh, before the election in 64 because they, uh, and I'd say maybe eight months before that. I guess maybe he went on uh, before Bob Kennedy left. I would imagine he put him on. May have. Because he originated my church. And the boy said that, you remember? He said that when they asked for his resignation. He announced that in the paper. That's in the clipping. And he just gave him a church. publicly charging. I'm not sure when it was <coughs> first put on. I, I tell you, I really think it was uh, before Bob left. He left September 3rd. I think it was. You think he was shaken by this at all? Do you think it, this testimony had any effect on Bittman? I really don't have any way of telling. I'm sure it must have. That's a surprise. When did they know about the envelope and the email? I don't think they knew about it, uh, which I told you this morning, until it was brought out uh, in well, the weren't trial. They, weren't they there when they opened the box? The uh, Our people? Yeah. They didn't know anything about that. Fred confirmed that to this evening. I asked him again about it. He said, no, that's the end of work. I'm surprised. Is Fred staying on? Is he, is he happy where he is? <coughs> well, uh, as far as I know, <coughs> he, uh, Fred's been he's shaken up by the whole thing. I think he feels fairly miserable and uncertain. I haven't had any harder on Don Turner, actually. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get Don out back in school in September. Give him something to get in the box. <coughs> What's his problem? What does he say? Don Turner, yeah. <coughs> well, want to make as much trouble as you can? No, I don't think <laughs> that way. I'm not sure it does to me, but I think that, uh, he just doesn't live in the real world, and he's, uh, he's uh, such a theoretician, he 